uh, we are graphing a parabola in vertex form. <laughs> Sorry. Math with the speed. Math with the speed. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with the speed. All right. So when we're doing transformations of quadratics, in vertex form, you definitely want to be familiar with what vertex form does for you. So again, knowing vertex form will help you double check yourself when you're graphing because if you know about the reflection and you know about the vertical stretch and the vertical strength and the horizontal shift and the vertical shift, when you, you're looking at your final graph, you'll be able to double check yourself like, ooh, based on this equation, I should have gone left three spaces and up two spaces, stuff like that. Um, and then the most important thing that you need to remember about vertex form when we are graphing is your X coordinate and your Y coordinate. So you want to know that H and K are your vertex. You need this information. So inside the parentheses is H, outside the parentheses at the end is K. Oh, my bad. It's fine though. Okay. What is a parabola? Well, a parabola is a U-shaped curve. Uh-huh created by a quadratic function. It definitely has a vertex in the middle. So your all of your graphs should look like this. They should look like a U-shaped curve. There should be a center point at, in the middle. It could be, ow. <laughs> it could either be all the way at the bottom or it could be all the way at the top. Okay, so to graph a parabola, you can use a table and plot the points or you can use transformations. But we are using a table and plotting points right now. It is important that you notice that the vertex is in uh, the middle of the parabola and it also should be the middle of your table. This is the most important information that I'm about to give you right now. It needs to be in the middle. Actually, I should write a note to myself to like put that. I need to highlight that. Highlight in the middle. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is you have an equation, which is g of x equals x minus two quantity squared plus four. By looking at this um, equation, you should already know two things. You should already know, number one, that you're going to move to the right two spaces and you're gonna move up four spaces from the parent graph. You should already know that and be thinking that in your head. Okay, but we're going to do it by graphing tables. So when you're graphing tables, first of all, you want to make sure that you have a table and the and it's going to have five. So let me fill in the top of the table for you. Okay. Um, the first thing that you want to know is you definitely want to know that um, you are going to put the vertex in the center. You know what the vertex is. The vertex is two comma four. Right? So two goes in the middle of your table. That's where the two is. Boom. Smack dab in the middle. Okay? And based on what your vertex is, that's what's going to make you fill in the rest of your x values. So the, your, ve your vex values, your x values are determined by what your vertex is. So your vertex is two. So what comes after two on the number line? Three. What comes after three on the number line? Four. What comes before two on the number line? One, and what comes before one on the number line? A zero. You see me? You see me? So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill in the Y values, right? So I'm gonna plug in my Y value into my equation. So instead of X, I'm gonna use zero minus two squared plus four. What's zero minus two? Negative two, negative two squared is what? Four. Four plus four is what? Eight. You did that. So now we're gonna do the next one. Instead of plugging, instead of X, what number are we gonna plug in this time? We're gonna plug in a one. I'm like, is there an intermediate step that I'm missing? Why is it not doing it when I click on it? Okay, so we're gonna plug in one. So one, instead of X, we use one. So one minus two is gonna be what? Negative one, negative one squared is what? Positive one. One plus four is what? Five. Now, I can plug.
plug in the vertex if I want to, right? However, do I need to plug in the vertex? Because I know the Y value of the vertex, don't I? The vertex is two comma four, right? But let's just plug it in for the heck of it. Two minus two is what? Zero. Zero plus four is what? Four. But you already knew that. Okay, let me start being extra. Now, the fun thing about a parabola, I'm gonna see if you see it before. I'm not gonna spoil it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so we're gonna plug in three now. Okay, so we're gonna do three minus two. Three minus two is gonna give me one. One squared is one. One plus four is five. It look familiar? Okay, and then we're gonna plug in four, right? So we're gonna do four minus two, which is two. Two squared is what? Four. Four plus four is what? Eight. Look familiar? Hey now. Okay, you should know all parabolas are symmetrical. So if I put the vertex in the middle, right? Shouldn't the two values above it and two values below it match? Yes, they should, as they should. Okay, so I'm gonna plot the parent graph. This is the parent function, right? But these are my new points, all my points that I just plotted. So I plotted zero comma eight, I plotted one comma five, 2 comma 4 and 3 comma 5 and 4 comma 8 and that ladies and gentlemen maybe is my graph it's also the same as if I did a translation because it's, if I did a transformation I would have moved it um, left two spaces I mean right two spaces excuse me and then I moved it um, up four spaces so doo, doo, doo. perfect right so it's the same thing whether you make a table or whether you do it by transformations um you should get the same graph i feel like i said a lot there but it's okay we going we going we doing this okay so now my next function is x plus two quantity squared minus three right what is the first thing that you should put on the table you should definitely put in your vertex on the table okay when you put your vertex on the table, you know it because it's your H value. Your H value is negative two in this case. It goes in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the table. And then you fill in the rest of the values that go on a number line. So what comes right before negative two on a number line? Negative one. What comes right before that? Zero. Now what comes after negative two on a number line? Negative three. And then after that, negative four. Okay, so remember your table values are determined by the x value of your vertex. All right, we're going to plug them in. Instead of x, I'm going to use negative 4. Negative 4 plus 2 is going to give me negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 3 is going to give me 1. Uh huh. Okay, so then I'm going to do negative 3. When I do negative 3, I'm going to get uh, negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Minus 3 is going to give me negative 2. Now, do I need to plug in my x value for my vertex? I don't think so. But I'm going to do it anyway. But I already know what my y value of my vertex is going to be. It's going to be negative 3 because that's what's in the equation, right? H, K. K is my the y value of my vertex, negative three. You see that big negative three in the equation up there? So we're gonna plug it in just to double check ourselves, right? So negative two plus negative two is gonna give me what? Zero, zero squared is zero, and then zero minus three is a minus three. We did that. Now what I tell you last time about the pattern, parabolas are symmetrical, right? So if parabolas are symmetrical, and I did all my work right, and the vertex is in the middle of the table, what do I already know that this next x value is gonna be? I mean, this next y value is gonna be. It should be, what, negative two. But we're gonna, we're gonna do the work anyway. Negative one plus two is gonna be one. One squared is one. One minus three is negative two. And then I'm gonna plug in zero, but I already know what this y value is gonna be. What is this y value gonna be? Should be one, right? But we're gonna plug it in anyway. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. Ayy! Okay, so this is my parent function, right? And these are the points 
from my table that I just made, negative four comma one, negative three comma negative two, negative two comma negative three, negative one comma negative two, and then zero comma one. But if I have my parent graph, looking at the equation, I already know that my transformation is left two spaces, down three spaces, right? So I'm gonna swoop to the left, swoop down, and look, I end up exactly where those points are. Y'all got this, you're good. Let me look at my little navigator here real quick. How many more examples y'all got? You got one more example. Y'all should try to do this next one by yourself. So what does that mean? That means that you should pause the video. Pause! Try to do it on your own. I'll even show you the little table. Mm -hmm. So fill that table in by yourself. Plot the points on a little graph. See if you get it right. See, I'll see you in a minute. Pause the video. I hope you pause the video because I'm over here dancing. Girl, put your records on. Tell me your favorite song. Girl, go ahead, let your hair down. <laughs> okay, I hope you pause this video. So looking at the equation before I begin, let's just talk about that negative that's in the front, right? That negative in the front, what's it telling me gonna happen to the graph? That it's gonna be a reflection. Okay, and then I have a one fourth. What is that? Is that an A value, an H value, or a K value? It's an A value, right? And it's less than one, so automatically I know that that's going to be a vertical strength. So my graph probably going to be a little fat or wide, depending um, how you look at it. And then I have X plus one, right? So that one, what is it? An A value, an H value, or a K value? Well, I know that H values are always inside of the parentheses so that's a, a horizontal shift right and it's gonna go to the left one space so I gotta hold all that information in my head right first of all it's gonna be a reflection it's gonna be a compression and then it's also gonna go left one space now I don't have a K value so that means it's not moving up or down so I can expect that it's gonna be sitting on the X axis okay now with all of that information we're just gonna hold that visual in our head right a little wider it's gonna be a frowny face gonna be moved to the left okay so now we're gonna look for our vertex what is our vertex our vertex is um, gonna be what negative one good so now we got to fill in the rest of the table what comes right before negative one on the number line zero what comes before zero on a number line one good what comes after negative one on a number line and what comes after negative two on a number line good so now I'm gonna plug these in so when I plug the first one in I'm gonna do you have to remember that you need to do order of operations right so we're going to do negative three plus one which is negative two squared negative two squared is four now you're looking at that fraction and you're like, oh my gosh, not a fraction. Wait, okay. I have four. What is one fourth of four? One, right? A fourth. If I have four things, what's one of fourth of that? Just one. So, and then of course it's a negative because that's a negative one fourth. So my answer is negative one. Ta-da! That's not that bad. Okay, um, so then I'm going to do negative 2 uh, plus 1, so that's going to give me negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. What's 1 times negative 1 fourth? Everything times 1 is what? Itself, right? So negative 1 times negative 1 fourth is going to be negative 1 fourth or negative 0 0.25, however you want to look at it. All right. So now we're going to plug in negative 1. So I'm going to get negative 1 plus 1 in parentheses. That's 0. 0 squared is 0. And 0 times negative 1 fourth is still 0. You see, guys, you're looking at that fraction, and I know it freaked you out. I know it did, but that's okay. Because guess what? Parabolas are symmetrical. So if I have the vertex at 
negative 1 comma 0, I automatically already know when I plug in this 0, what's going to be my y value. Well, it has to match the negative 0 0.25. And then the next one, when I plug in the 1, what does it have to match? It has to match that negative 1. No math involved, but if I do that math, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 squared is still 1. 1 times negative 1 fourth is negative 1 fourth. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times um, 2 squared is 4. What's negative? What's a fourth of 4? 1, and it's negative, so negative 1. Hello? Don't be afraid of the fractions! Anyway, so this is our parent graph, as per usual. And these are our points that we just plotted on the graph. Negative 3 comma negative 1, negative 2 comma negative 0 0.25, negative 1 comma 0. Remember, I told you it was going to be sitting on the x-axis still. And then 0 comma negative 0 0.25, and then 1 comma negative 1. Really close together, but it's fine. And swoop. Remember, I also told you we already knew it was going to be wider. And that does it. Guys, you guys did so good. Keep up the good work. You should go back to the lesson, see if you could get it without my help. And you always know what I'm going to say. If not, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.